I am going to be talking about something which is extremely important. I am going to be talking about which you and me will spend 25 years long years doing that. Did you guess by now what I am talking about? And I am going to bring out some fascinating studies done right with the IIT um, Delhi and Ames Delhi and particularly this was in relation to understanding what is Yoga Nidra. Yes, 25 years of our life out of a 75 year lifespan goes in sleeping. But is Yoga Nidra sleeping? Well, no. What is really Yoga Nidra? My own exposure to Yoga Nidra has been off late uh, a couple of years back when one of the professors, Dr. Mehtat, was teaching the course of Yoga Nidra and I got quite interested to understand what is Yoga Nidra. Yoga Nidra stems uh, from, obviously it is uh, very much relatable to modern science. However, it stems from the ancient Mahabharata, from the ancient scriptures talking about the use of that particular technique which leads to not being in deep meditation, not being aware, not being awake. So it's like kind of a state of transition or state where a lot of physiological changes are happening. I, the first time when I did it, I thought Yoga Nidra is only about guided meditation. And then I went back to the teacher and said, is it so? And he said, no. The next time I did it, I thought that will induce a better sleep. Is that the purpose of Yoga Nidra? The answer was no. Is it like an extended state where you become very relaxed and all the body's functions are now sort of recovering and rejuvenating? Was that the real reason for it? The answer is no. If you look at all the ancient texts and scriptures talking about Yoga Nidra, or the modern connotations of Yoga Nidra. Yoga Nidra is a very, very special technique. It is a combination of guided meditation, some music of course to lead into the states and then very, very important bringing that awareness to the level which is then modulating your understanding or the proprioception of the external surroundings. I'm going to simplify whatever I was talking in very, very simple words. Basically, you are not sleeping and you are not entirely awake. You're quite relaxed, but at the same time, you have an internal awareness, which is very unique and distinct. Let's see what the latest trial, which was uh, released and published in one of the journal states. So what the study was they took functional MRI. So functional MRI is like a big MRI scanner where you know exactly what activity is happening. A lot of meditators came forth for the study and then they studied what is happening in practitioners of Yoga Nidra. And the study found the more hours participants were spending in practicing this Yoga Nidra, the more noticeable changes in the brain activity was seen. Most of the people who participated in this particular study, which I'm going to post in the comment section below had an average 3000 hours of experience of meditation and according to the uh, the yogic texts if you look at that the yoga nidra helps in those samskaras to change those deep subconscious intentions those subconscious expressions those subconscious thoughts to sort of change and alleviate that and release them which eventually of course has a connotation to health however it's not just simple relaxation or being healthy or helping you to repair your body it is changing something in the brain what is being changed so what was very interesting to note in the study was there is an area in the brain called default mode network. When I'm not doing anything, I'm just relaxing. Automatically, my default mode network gets active. It is all about self-referential thoughts. I would be constantly thinking, what did I do yesterday? What did I do day before? What am I going to do tomorrow? I will be constantly churning those thoughts. I will not be able to be remaining in the present. That default mode network's hyperactivity would lead me to anxiety would lead me to worry, would lead me to stress. This default mode network was studied particularly in the practitioners of Yoga Nidra where they saw a significant change which is happening. There was lowering down, toning down or de activation of that default mode network which means essentially the person is more relaxed, more aware. 
capable of translating those subconscious impressions and bringing it out into the conscious so that it can be worked upon. Deep rooted childhood traumas, deep rooted memories, which is bothering. Now, I had one of those deep rooted memories, which took me a lot of time to come out. I was not even consciously aware about it, but every single time my behavior an outcome would be linked to that particular childhood incidence. And that was in my subconscious. 90% of our mind is subconscious. 10% is conscious. Yes, conscious is aware. It's trying to see what is good, bad. But what is subconscious is like a programmed pilot. It is autopilot. It is just constantly working behind the scenes. If I am aware, if I bring it into the conscious expression, I can work on that problem. I can work on that particular intention, that expression, which is not allowing my growth to happen. So when I practice yoga nidra, my very first yoga nidra was, of course, with the Dr. Mehta's uh, yoga nidra, and I'm going to post it uh, where people can download it. Of course, it's in the context of a leadership conference, but I want you guys to actually practice it Put a sankalpa, which means what is it that you're trying to fix in your life? Because remember, automatically from that subconscious changes which is happening from the default mode network, which is deactivating to bring you into a state of that conscious attention, changes will happen. I want you to experience that. I want you to feel that. Most people feel that yoga nidra is, of course, you lie down. You generally you do it when late evening, you're not very tired, otherwise you'll go off to sleep. You don't do it early in the morning. You do it somewhere late evening. It's a 45 minutes guided technique. You don't have to do anything. I think this is the simplest form of meditation. I won't call it meditation because it is not meditation. I won't call it relaxation because it is not relaxation. I would not call it as a yogic practice alone because it is a mix and match of lot of things happening together your brain sort of is going into different realms or so to speak mind is going into different layers of expression your subconscious bringing up into the conscious you're very well aware of your surrounding you're sort of dipping down and coming back now why is it then called nidra why is it called sleep let's think a little bit about it you know there are two kinds of processes happening in the sleep there's something called the non-rem when i'm completely asleep and rapid eye movement when the lot of active changes are happening in my sleep the first four hours is generally the time when non-rem kicks in and the last four hours where rem kicks in kicks in so we go through these cycles, non-REM, REM, non-REM, REM, and in the last half REM, non-REM, REM, non-REM. Non it's just the reverse. So non-REM dominant in the first half, REM dominant in the second half. Now, when you practice these kind of yoga nidra practice, what is happening is that you go quickly deeper into the states of the non-REM and then REM, and you cycle enough in the shortest time. I am going to show you a statistic of a person whom we recorded with the Aura Ring. Aura Ring is nothing but a ring which captures your sleep or you can do it with your Apple phones or Apple watches, anything which is documenting your sleep. So we got this person who was actually not sleeping for 45 days, we measured his total sleep. And, and you would be surprised that in that 45 days, his deep rest was roughly six and a half hours only deep rest. And the moment we did 45 minutes of yoga nidra, 30 minutes of deep rest was found. Just imagine the distinction and the difference. That is the power of such techniques. Now, obviously going back to the study, what was found in that functional MRI is that there is a physiological change. There is a change which is happening in the brain structure by these practices. So I'm quite fascinated when we talk of uh, the, the, the ancient technique, which many, 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 many years back was known by these uh, sages and they were able to extract that technique to make these changes. And modern day science is trying to document what is really happening in the brains of uh, the individuals as they practice yoga nidra. In the Western context, it is also called the NSDR, non sleep deep rest which in a way is true because you're not actually going into the delta most of us i want you to do a day audit extremely important how many minutes in a single day are you spending 
closing your eyes. Certain cultures, I love it because they pray four to five times. Automatically, you have to close your eyes. Some people tell me it's not even a minute talk. Extremely painful because there is no alpha in the entire day. Constant beta is bad for the brain. So I was talking about this theta, which is in this trance state. Now the beauty of practices such as yoga nidra is, and that is what we have seen when we hook off these electroencephalograms. I love studying the EEG. It's like a little signature of what is happening in the brain. How the heart's ECG, the same way, EEG for the brain gives me that signature pattern. The beauty of it is, if I don't go into the trance or if I don't sleep, can I produce that theta and delta? The answer is yes. In an awake state, when I am able to produce these waves, it is doing a physiological change in my brain structure, in the chemistry. I'm building all the right chemicals, the right hormones. My circuits are now tuned in such a way Natural opioids, natural painkillers, natural substances leading to my elevation of the mood is happening. Happiness is happening. My entire physiology, right from the brain to the entire body system, is now absolutely relaxed to a point that recovery is happening. So if you want to have something change in your life, something fixed in your life, don't just take yoga nidra for relaxation. Yes, it will give relaxation, it will improve blood pressure, it will improve diabetes. It has a deep influence on recovering certain tissues which are uh, at a uh, problem. Yes, health benefits are multiple, but the brain's changes, the mind shift, what is happening, try for 45 days, pick up a sankalpa. When I say sankalpa, it's just one thing which is bothering you. Pick that up, which you want to fix it, which you want to change it. Keep in that yoga nidras meditation as you are doing for 45 days and try it out just late evening, every single day, simply lying down and see the difference for yourself. Why 45 days? Generally, give and take 45 to 66 days, it takes for a little bit of a change to happen in the brain. A little bit of a physiological phenomena in the brain takes some while and you have to of course do it consistently. Every day you will have to keep doing that to make that change. If you want to do definitely learn more about Yoga Nidra, please do uh, remain in touch with us. Uh, give your contacts below and we are coming up with a course which is on Yoga Nidra and it is going to be conducted in various cities. Hang tight. The entire vision and mission for us at the lab is to make you understand the real connotations, the real changes of these amazing, beautiful ancient techniques and you can use it in the modern day to make that change that you deserve and you desire. See ya then.